Welcome to Corel Painter Sergeant vs. Master Course, an in-depth series where we will learn about the Sergeant vs. tool set and how to apply them on different subjects such as still life, portraiture, architecture and landscapes. Our classes will have a gradual level of complexity, from simple sketching to more advanced techniques. Whether you are a beginner or an advanced artist, you are welcome to stay with us. We believe there is something for everyone in this course. It's good to see you again. In our previous classes, we have worked with elaborated frameworks to progress on the paintings. And now, I'll share with you a couple of techniques um, to show you what these brushes can do and at the same time we can train achieving results simply by focusing on shape plus color value and shape plus value. We will have two very different approaches. One, a more abstract technique and two, a more loose surrealist technique. Our subject, portraits. Portraiture of real life people or characters is one of my personal favorite subjects and I have many tips to share, but since this is a brush focused course, I can leave you with some very basic yet important keys. There are so many ways to portray a person or a character. 1. Full body, aesthetic or in movement, during some activity that the person master or is known for or is defined by has focus on figure and activity. 2. Three quarters body and half body. Overview of the figure but closer to the personality. 3. Bust or face. Here is when you want the viewer to get closer to the personality, the mind of the subject have a more personal, closer contact. Also important as means to focus on facial features. This is what we will see on the second exercise. 4. The single most important area in a portrait is the eyes, depending on how the figure is being portrayed. Um, it will sound cliché, but it is solely true. The eyes are the windows to the soul. That should be especially reinforced and worked with care on busts or face portraits. Open or closed eyes can have equally strong impact. On full body portraits, a coherent overall figure slash silhouette and pose will be the most important. Also valid for close-ups, which are more abstract, such as what we will see in the first exercise. On three quarters and half body, a balance between the stance of the figure and the interplay of the facial features is demanded. It means that you need to work on these elements equally well. Portraits can be a caricature, stylized, painterly, abstract, photorealist or a combination of these. I recommend that you take portraiture classes, watch videos, tutorials, etc. as this is a very complex subject. For further help and tips as well as a simple but effective framework for doing more realistic portraits, visit the webinar I have done with Corel Painter a couple of years ago on how to paint skin and hair with focus on the versatility of its digital airbrush. Many of these principles can be applied using other brushes as well. Alright, so let's talk about our first subject. Take a print screen. This is an indigenous man from Brazil and you find this reference image on Wikipedia in their article Indigenous Peoples of Brazil and it's credited to Roosevelt Pinheiro of Agência Brasil. Brazil has many different indigenous tribes, each one with their own unique language, costumes and culture. Unfortunately, like with all the indigenous peoples of the world, the minority that survived struggle in our modern times. Overall, I find their handcrafts, body paint and many of uh, things in their cultures very cool, especially in terms of visual interest. Our tool of work now is the sergeant brush itself. 
And as special rule, we are going to work in one layer. The only tool you will use is your brush. Nothing else, no eraser, lasso, nothing. I know many less experienced artists dread working in one layer, but the secret here is being strategic and taking all the time you need with each new brush stroke. Now and then, training yourself on working in one layer will sharpen your skills in different ways and make you more confident. Here, you will learn how to solve problems using only your brush, um, like a survival skill, so to speak. So the basic brush mechanics for this exercise. Lower your resaturation. In my case, because I am very light-handed, I lower, I lower it all the way to about 5%. The point is to have the brush blending colors easily, like if you were working with fresh traditional oils. So it will always blend with the underneath and neighbor colors, including the canvas itself. Select Fade in a blending settings for better results. Just remember that if you have a break and you close the program, when you come back, you need to set um, the fade blending mode again because or else it will be automatically set to balanced. So remember to do that. Okay, and the reason to use fade is that you have a gradient brush stroke starting in low density and ending in full color density. That will allow you to do better shading, gradients and always know the direction you need to apply your brush strokes. Doing a main shape allow for brush spontaneity. Forget about perfect coverage. It's important to get your shape right, but it, if you don't get it right at first, you can fix it along the process. Doing a gradient, shading or color value transition. Brush strokes should always follow the right direction according to the brush stroke gradient. Work with established colors by blending and dragging them. Sometimes we just want to stretch or shrink a shape uh, or rework its transition. So zero the resaturation, dab and drag. Fine tuning a shape color with layering another shape color. Sometimes the brush size won't allow you to do a shape properly, so you use this resource. Edges. This brush has super sharp edges, but it has a very interesting painterly trail. So you can have all hard edges if you want to, or like me, you can have a balance between painterly edges and hard edges. Use canvas color, full opacity, the edge will be hard. You can add a jagged or painterly effect by simply dabbing in some points. Make sure the brush dabs in the middle of the threshold between the canvas color and the subject. And last but not least, Think strategically before doing a brush stroke. Take all the time you need for it. Now, let's see how it all works in action. The first thing we do. In this more abstract technique, it doesn't really matter the order of the planes. Unlike the other techniques you have learned so far, where you have used it rigorously. So what is your framework here? 1. You need to recognize shapes well, and you have learned so far if you have paid attention to the previous classes and practiced the exercises. 2. Start with the main big recognizable shapes. Divide your subject in main big shapes, and that is because you can fit the smaller subshapes more easily during the process. Three. Choose a maximum brush size and a minimum brush size to work with. They should be relatively big, including the smallest size, to prevent you from defining any details. The biggest size shouldn't be too exaggerated to prevent you from doing slopey shapes when you paint larger areas.
In this case, we have one shape making the face and the body, and a shape making the hair, and a shape making the coca, or the word we use for headgears like this. When you do your main shapes, you don't need to worry about perfect coverage. Allow the brush spontaneity to work in your favor, adding interesting painterly effects to your work. Very important note, remember to find the colors as you have learned in class 3. First finding the hue, then the value range, then the saturation range. If you feel confident, you can change these. You can always choose to have the values a little bit uh, lighter or darker or more in mid-tones and you can choose to have more saturated colors or desaturated colors. That depends on your level of experience. At this point, you can choose any area to work on. I started roughly adding some shadows to the neck and working on the jaw and chin area. I start working with some foundation for the mouth. I have to tell you, this, together with the nose and the eyes, are the most difficult parts to work on because of the brush size. So you will see me shaping and reshaping these parts several times. If you want to work in a more systematic manner, you can always try to paint all shapes that have the same color, like a set, and only then move to another set of shapes with another color. Or you can do it like me, go randomly. I start the eyes and they look a bit funny. I keep trying. And when they are okay enough for what the brush can do in this big size, I let go and move on. Now I work more on his face silhouette and hair. I fix a bit more of the nose and other areas. I make the shape of his collar using the dark color first and I do so in an intent to separate it from the white background. I'm well aware it has white borders, but that is a choice to make this visually clear 
to read in this particular technique. Brushstroke direction is important in simpler techniques like this because its very direction will give a slight illusion of structure. As you see here and you notice in other parts of the process of this particular piece. Now, we work the coca or hat gear. Add some final, simple finishing touches. And I stop. There are many things I want to continue to polish and fix, but that's not the point with this technique. Here we let the looseness, abstraction and intentional imperfection make the art shine. This is one of my personal favorite techniques I do with the sergeant brush and I am an absolute big fan of the vibrant, elegant colors I can get with this brush as well as the traditional feel. Such sketches are great for the purpose of relaxing and unwiring from doing polished works, also can be used as warm-ups. You can, however, refine the work a bit further. In this case, just use a smaller brush to fine-tune the shapes, silhouettes and color nuances. And this brush is also excellent for finer works towards photorealism. But then you would need to use, obviously, a different framework. Moving on to our second exercise, take a print screen of our subject. This is a painting I did as a demo for a Corel Painter webinar a couple of years ago, where we had a framework for painting portraits, showing the flexibility of the digital airbrushes. The original model you can find on the Art Models book series, very cool series, I recommend if you want to study nudes, human figure and anatomy. This time we are going to work in black and white, meaning we only have two variables and that is shape and value. In this exercise I will teach you a simple framework for black and white digital sketches. I do not recommend you apply it for traditional media or if you want to go for photorealism, then different frameworks would be required. Your objective as a student in this part of the class is to observe how form is given by recognizing shapes and applying them with correspondent values. This second demo is separated into three parts. 1. Blocking the subject. 2. A refinement process. And 3. A little artsy trick. We will use the blocky background brush. We will work across multiple layers due to the nature of the brush and you will understand why in a moment. You cannot use any eraser, lasso or any other tool but your brush to solve this work. Compositing methods are not allowed either but you can vary your layer opacity if you need sometimes. So here are the basic brush mechanics. This brush works a bit different. When you select a brush size, the actual brush stroke is half of the surface that you see on a screen. One single stroke is quite sparse, cloudy-like, while multiple strokes atop each other um, build density and they smudge each other. The brush strokes are a bit slow, they are sticky and the very opposite to what you get with the grainy pressure knife and the sergeant brush that are super slippery. To build gradients, you can do it the hard way by varying the values. 
selecting each of them on a color wheel. You can also do it over multiple layers. If you do one uh, zigzag brush stroke, for example, like back, back and forth without releasing the brush, it will just smudge. With this is what the thin strokes look like. And on a single layer, if you add different values on a shape, let's say from dark to light, the value variation the value variation may not show so much because of the smudging properties. Of course, if you choose extreme values, they pop out more. You see the same example from light to dark. Here you can see an example of abstract texturing. For a more smoothly covered shape, layer up the values across multiple layers. This first shape is two layers. In comparison, you see how airy the one layer shape looks. Now, a three layer shape. It has a beautiful, smooth density. So let's see how it all works in action. Part one, blocking. First thing we do is to use the big brush sizes to roughly block the background. In this blocking exercise, go simpler on the values, working light to mid tones. The important thing is to quickly or roughly block the biggest shapes. Once you have done that, block in the main shadows while continuing to work in light to mid tones. For the darker spots, simply use a dark mid tone. You can also fill in some quick highlights where they are strongest. And last, just finish blocking any spots you find important. At this point, the portrait itself is super rudimentary, yet we have all important information that help us to read, shape and understand the image. I highly recommend you do quick studies simply blocking your subjects like this. I confess, however, in my workflow I never use this particular blocking technique. But I know this one is helpful for beginners in digital painting or for those who have less experience. Part 2. Refinement Process For this study, I don't want to make a carbon copy of the reference painting. I want, to, I want this version to have its own personality. I remove the background, because I personally prefer black and white portraits without background. Now you can use this structure as a map to fill in information and a final gradation of values, so you give your subject proper form. You can start anywhere in the image, choose an area and then compare it with the reference and see how you can fill in with the missing values. 
Also notice, because the brush is quite airy, in some areas you have blocked, you may need to fill the shape so it looks uh, more solid or more dense. You do that by layering brush strokes. But remember, to go across different layers when you see that the patch you are working on starts smudging too much. I keep working with slightly big brush sizes because I want the overall look to be soft. But you can use smaller, finer brush sizes if you want, and in doing so you can go further in the refinement process than I will for this particular exercise. This part of the process is just about being observant and in tune with nuance, asking yourself where you should go lighter or darker. Keep refining the mid-tones. Some people say when you draw or paint portraits, you should start with the eyes. In my experience, where you start will always depend on a technique being applied. And black and white digital techniques such as this one, when you master shape and value, you can start anywhere and furthermore, build the values in any order that you want. For traditional pencils and the like on white paper, you can start anywhere as well. Just being careful to go from left to right, not just much the work, and at least in my opinion and experience, always work from the lightest value, gradually until your darkest points. Notice even here at the eyelashes, we are still in a dark mid-tone, and the same will be for the nostrils. We keep refining shapes, values and gradients. Let's fill in the values in the neck area, fine tune more of the face's silhouette. We work further on the lower parts of the image. And we fill in the hair with basic value to make it denser. I start filling in the hair with some very rough illusion of strands and structure, going smoothly to a slightly darker tone. We add in some lighter tone structure as well. With white and the smaller brush size, we refine the loose strands. Another round, refining the shadows and some more parts of her face. I experiment reshaping her eye. Keep refining and reshaping some parts, adding slightly darker values. Now we move on to part 3 and I show you some artsy trick and we finish the work. So, as I said, I want to give this work its own personality. I close the reference and everything that I do from this point on is 
100% basic on aesthetic choices. I block in some darker points in her hair to frame her face and add more depth. You can refine the form of her curls with some large highlights and some soft shading. I will show you a little trick. In case your image stretches all the way to the edge like this one, you can increase the canvas size. And with big brush sizes, using white, you can layer some soft brush strokes, making a nice gradation or fading to white if you want to. So this is a nice trick to keep. Now, I proceed to complete the finishing process based on personal choices that I think are more fitting for this work rather than what is on a reference, making the overall look a little bit more stylized. So, I slightly increase the size of her eyes, reshape her lips, and so on. Flipping the image is quite useful, you may have seen many artists doing this. And this is the result. It has shape, depth, reads well, but it has no detail. In your own exercise, you can refine it to any level you want. Overall, I love this brush for something like this refinement process or something towards photorealism. It has a beautiful traditional appeal to it. Now you have learned two other brush techniques that you can apply to any subject, so I suggest you start experimenting with them. To end this class and our course, I leave you with some personal thoughts. Keep studying and sharpening the fundamentals because they will be your base for everything in terms of visual art. For a greater progress, always have a process of evaluation. If you just keep working but you don't take time to evaluate, it will take much longer to evolve and reach milestones. Practice these basic techniques and I wish you luck and fun to develop them further in your own way, with your own artistic twist. Also apply the frameworks and tips you have learned here with other brushes and painter. Now I'd like to recommend some resources to help you further. First and furthermost, take note of the painterartist.com, the website hub of all things painter. Program updates, new launches, support, etc. You can also find news of free webinars and tutorials with amazing artists such as Don Zig Miller, and Joel Payne, Dominic Saponaro and many others. Download your trial version of Corel Painter 2021 if you haven't done so already. This is one of the very best digital pr painting programs in the market. And in my opinion, it is the best one when it comes to painting and drawing. And especially 
if you want to have a um, traditional media feel as well. Subscribe to Corel Painter YouTube channel for more courses like this one, replay of webinars and what not. Second, visit imag.co for some of the very best inspiration on digital painting and CG industry. And they have a video library of masterclasses, top-notch content by artists like Emmanuel Xu, Mark Simonetti, Armand Serrano, and many, many others that will help to take your art to the next level. And the IMAG mentorship, where you can have services such as mentorship programs, a la carte portfolio reviews, courses directly with amazing CG artists. I have two programs there, one focused on realism and the other on portraiture. Last but not least, nature and life are your best art schools. Observe it, sketch it, take notes, learn with it, draw and paint from life and from your own photography. Discover and portray art on your own terms. The value you take from this experience is a very solid base for your unique artistic journey. And remember, evaluation. So thank you so much for watching. Corel Painter and I hope this class has been helpful to you. Stay creative, stay positive and inspired.